Gather your people, O Lord, one bread, one body, one spirit of love. Gather your people, O Lord. Draw us forth to the table of life, brothers and sisters, each of us called to walk in your light. Gather your people, O Lord. Gather your people, O Lord. One bread, one body, one spirit of love. Gather your people, O Lord. We are parts of the body of Christ, needing each other, each of the gifts the Spirit provides. Gather your people, O Lord. Gather your people, O Lord. One bread, one body, one spirit of love. Gather your people, O Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, glory to God, and on earth peace to people, to people of goodwill. Glory to God in the highest, glory to God, and on earth peace to people, to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, you, you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, glory to God in the highest, glory to God, and on earth peace to people, to people of goodwill, Lord Jesus Christ, only be God. God in Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, glory to God. And on earth peace to people, to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
Glory to God in the highest, glory to God, and on earth peace to people, to people of goodwill. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. I did not call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again the Lord called Samuel who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said, you called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for a third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, go to sleep, and if you are called, reply, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of his to be without effect. The word of the Lord. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. I have waited, waited for the Lord. And he stooped toward me and heard my cry. And he put a new song into my mouth, a hymn to our God. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. Sacrifice or offering you wished not, but ears open to obedience you gave me. Holocausts or sin offerings you sought not, then said I, behold, I come. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. In the written scroll, it is prescribed for me. To do your will, O my God, is my delight, and your law is within my heart. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. I announced your justice in the vast assembly. 
I did not restrain my lips, as you, O Lord, know. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the body is not for immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you, know, do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? But whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Avoid immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been purchased at a great price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. We have found the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who brings us truth and grace. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. John was standing with two of his disciples and as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The, do, the two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come, and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening. It's kind of nice to be back to wearing green again. I mean, I love the holidays, I love Christmas, but we're back to ordinary time and uh, life gets a little simpler liturgically, which is not a bad thing always. It's uh, nice to be back into the rhythm of ordinary time. In this uh, first reading we have from the book of Samuel, we have this call of Samuel, which is a very interesting story, the Lord calling to this young boy 
And he has no idea who's speaking or who's talking to him. So he just assumes it's Eli. He goes running to Eli. We might, though, be asking some questions. Why are they sleeping in the temple in the first place? Like, doesn't that seem a little weird? People don't usually, like, spend the night in the temple like a hotel. And why does Samuel run to Eli? What's their relationship? If we recall a couple of the details of Samuel's life from an earlier chapter, I think it helps us understand this whole dynamic and what's going on. Samuel's mother was Hannah, and his father was Elkanah, and uh, Hannah was barren. She didn't have any children, and uh, this caused her a lot of heartache. Hannah was very distressed because Unfortunately, some of her, uh, the fellow women around her were very cruel to her, making fun of her, saying, you know, you don't have any children, what's wrong with you? So Hannah goes to the temple in Shiloh and she prays. She says, Lord, please give me a child. And there's a whole kind of funny exchange between her and Eli because there's a misunderstanding. But the long and short of it is, Eli says, you will be with child by one year from today and that prophecy comes true she bears her son Samuel so what Hannah does is after he's grown a little bit but he's still very very young she returns to the temple and leaves Samuel there she says God you have given me a great gift in letting me bear a son I'm giving him back to you now it might seem a little harsh to us, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you just bring your child to the temple and leave him there. But the book says that Hannah came and visited. She was certainly still a part of Samuel's life. But that's why he's in the temple. He's here because he lives here. He is working under Eli, who is one of the priests. And so when, when Eli calls him my son, he doesn't mean it literally, but he means it because he's his spiritual father. He's the one who's been helping Samuel learn about the Lord and learn his duties in the temple. I think what's most fascinating about this story, though, is how Samuel has no idea who's calling him. I mean, you'd think if you grew up in the temple, if you've spent years and years working and living and just being around the temple, you would maybe have gotten familiar with the idea of God or had started to pray or, or have some connection to God. But it says that Samuel did not yet or was not yet familiar with the Lord. Samuel just didn't know, had never experienced God in such a profound way. And of course, the beauty of this story too is how Eli, his mentor, recognizes what's going on and teaches him, this is what is going on. This is the Lord that you're experiencing. It's this beautiful moment of a mentor teaching this young student how to pray, how to know God. There's another call that we have today. We saw in the gospel that Jesus is walking around, Jesus is beginning his ministry, but people don't recognize him, people don't know who he is. But John the Baptist recognizes, and he's beginning to point him out. He's saying, behold the Lamb of God. Behold, he is the one whom God has promised. And two of these disciples, one of whom is John, the son of Zebedee, recognizes what John the Baptist is saying. He understands what he's pointing out. And he goes and he follows Jesus, and we have this whole exchange. And then John himself becomes someone who leads others to Jesus because he doesn't just follow the Baptist's advice. He then goes and grabs his brother Peter, or Simon rather is his name at the time, and says, you've got to come meet the Christ. You've got to meet him. He's the Messiah. And he leads someone to know Jesus. I think these readings lead us to reflect on there are probably some Samuels here tonight at Mass. There's also probably many Eli's, many John the Baptists. What do I mean by that? There's probably some of us here who, even though we've been baptized, we come to church, we have spent time around the Lord's temple, we still might not be familiar with the Lord or not in as profound a way as the Lord would like. Some of us maybe need to learn to kind of be directed 
come to encounter the Lord more intimately. The Lord might be calling to us, are we listening? Are we ready to give that response? L speak, Lord, your servant is listening. I also think there's probably some Eli's in this room. There's probably some of you who are very familiar with the Lord. You know his voice, you've followed him, you've strove to love the Lord, to, to follow his commandments, to dedicate your life to him. You pray, you spend time developing that relationship. We need to be like Eli. We need to be like John the Baptist. It's not just a relationship so that we can follow the Lord. We also need to lead others to him, to point the way to the Lord, to be like John the Baptist or John the son of Zebedee and say, look, I found Jesus. This is him. And maybe many of us are actually a little mixture of both of these people. We're probably all a little like Samuel. We could do a little better a job listening to the Lord, getting to know the Lord's voice. And we can also begin to lead others towards the Lord, even if we're not perfect yet, even if we're not, you know, all the way done. My brothers and sisters, as we come to the altar, as we come into the Lord's temple to praise and worship him, let us ask the Lord to open our ears that we may hear how the Lord is speaking to us, that we may grow in our love and understanding of him. Let us also ask the Lord to help point the way, to help point out to the people in our lives, our family members, our friends, this is Jesus. This is the one who will heal your heart. This is the one that will bring peace and joy. Let us ask the Lord to help us do these things. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, unsubstantial with the Father, who can all things for us men and for our salvation, he came out of heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he saved his fire upon his body. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in the glory of the resurrection of the dead, and is his kingdom will have in all men. Amen. Let us present our petitions to our loving God, that those who lead our church may receive God's guidance and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those suffering oppression throughout the world may experience the peace of Christ in their lands and in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who struggle with chronic physical ailments may grow strong under the gentle and nurturing hand of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus' love may conform us evermore to his own heart as we strive to follow him more closely. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the souls of the faithful departed may find eternal peace in God's presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
and today's Mass is offered for Patricia Hamrich. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we praise and thank you for your love and mercy. We ask you to hear these prayers, help us to recognize your call in our lives, and help us also to point others to know Christ, your Son. We make this prayer through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare? Will your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you let the blinded see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean thin to such as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you and you in me? Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. It's with the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of this holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in 
in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. 
through him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I feast in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. 
Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Gently you raise me and heal my weary soul. You lead me by pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. <clears throat> Though I should wander the valley of death, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff, my comfort and my hope. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. You have set me a banquet of love in the face of hatred, crowning me with love beyond my power to hold. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Surely your kindness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of my God forevermore. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life.
Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just the regular announcements, uh, please lower the kneeler wherever you are uh, kneeling, or sitting rather, so that we can disinfect those areas, and if a few folks would help us clean the church after Mass, we'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, oh, and there is one other announcement, just to draw your attention to this week, there is a adjustment to the daily Mass schedule, because Father Brian is going to be away this week on a very uh, well-deserved uh, vacation time. So Monday and Tuesday, Mass will be here at Our Lady of Grace at 8.30, and then Wednesday through Friday, Mass will be at St. James at 9 a.m., but there will not be Mass at the other location uh, on those days. So again, Monday, Tuesday this week, daily Mass is at 8.30 here. Wednesday through Friday, it'll be at St. James at 9 a.m. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. God, we praise you. God, we bless you. God, we name you, Sovereign Lord. Mighty kingdoms, angels worship, Father by your church adored. All creation shows your glory, heaven and earth drew on your throne. Singing holy, 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 Lord of hosts and God alone. True apostles, faithful prophets, saints who set the world ablaze. Martyrs once unknown, unheaded, in the growing song of praise. While your church on earth confesses one most drastic trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God, our hope eternally.